Double bass drumming is a gigantic topic all its own, but I wanted to show you guys at least a couple different basic double bass principles. So let's start with perhaps the most basic of all, which is the 16th notes on the bass drums. Okay, so probably the best way to rehearse this would be to maybe have, you know, start with your eighth notes on the hi-hat, two and four on the snare, and then fill it up with 16th notes underneath on the kicks. Now, the important thing to remember about uh, this kind of double bass technique is that as simple as it may sound, it's very important to do a lot of like, monotonous exercises to work on your endurance as well as your accuracy. So, you know, one suggestion might be to take one of your favorite records, put on the headphones, and just groove along double bass style all the way through it, you know, as a way of like, kind of like a, a Jane Fonda aerobic workout principle there, all right? So you might have this. So whenever you practice it, you can you know, vary your snare drum a little bit here and there, but the main idea is to keep the double bass working there. Okay? So once you feel comfortable with your feet grooving along with the 16th notes, there's, just by changing a couple things on your hands, you can create a whole different feel. For instance, if we continue on with the 8th notes on the kick, or on the hi-hat, <coughs> and then I say we had like upbeats on the snare. All right? So instead of the 2 and 4 trip, it sounds like this. Like every other hi-hat gets a snare, and then with the 16th notes underneath it, you'd have this. Again, to really make that pattern happen, you always got to start it slow and work up to speed and really pay attention to the accuracy at a lower tempo before attempting it faster. Okay, now real quick, let's make a, uh, let's incorporate maybe a rudimental idea on top of the 16th notes to give you a yet a more diverse sounding pattern. Let's take the good old paradiddles and let's break them up between the cowbell and the uh, snare, okay, which would be this. All right, but now just put your kick drum, your double kicks underneath it. All right, or one more kind of off the wall idea would be to maybe go back to our samba pattern with the hands with it, which was this. But put the double kicks underneath that. Okay, now let's talk about snare and bass drum combinations. All right, let's start with a fairly simple one. This is just simply right left on the snare, right left with the feet. So a little faster you'd have. All right, another idea would be four with the hands, two with the feet. Right, left, right, left, then right, left with the feet. Okay, so now by going back and forth between the two and the four with the hands and always doing two with the feet, you can create some pretty interesting rhythmic combinations there. So let me do something for you from slow to fast where I'm just alternating between those two ideas. Okay, now is all I did that entire time was just either twos or fours on the hands and then twos on the feet. So again, it's very important to start right here. It all happens right here between your kick and snare. When you get comfortable there, then you can begin to explore some other possibilities around the rest of the kit. So for example, let me just do something for you real quick. Same type of format, but this time I'll put the twos and the fours around the kit and see what we come up with there.
Okay. Now let's get into some triplet applications of the double bass technique. Okay. Now we've all heard the old standby here of uh, right left kick, right left kick. Okay, here's a double bass variation on that theme. Let's have both hands hitting together at the same time and follow it with a right and a left on the kicks. So rhythmically, obviously, it's the same thing. But we have a different kind of a sound to it. Now, to further vary the different kind of sounds, you can have your left hand, you know, it's an idea, maybe have your right hand stationary, have your left hand wander around to some of the other sound sources, and you get some interesting sounds happening. Okay, and finally what you can do with that is have a uh, maybe your right hand on a cymbal and your left hand on the snare and do the same riff. So now let's look at a final triplet application where the bass drums are actually playing the entire triplet. Now the way I like to do this is to go right, right, left on the bass drums. So then when you add the snare at the end, it sounds like that. Now uh, like an idea of utilizing that look in a fill, uh, an easy one would be like say right, left, right with your hands and then the three feet to follow. Okay, now to incorporate this in a groove situation, uh, say you're, you're cranking out like a quarter note feel over here on the cymbal, uh, and just squeeze them in like this. So obviously any of these things I've showed you can be used in either a groove, fill, or solo situation. So now, let me perform a little piece for you. This is something called Pedal to the Metal, and it uh, kind of demonstrates a lot of the different techniques that we talked about. <laughs> 